Yo, what up? It's Papa Swolio, and it's episode 469 of the Daily Mother a Swole, the most muscular podcast, swole cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex, we all flex. Ah, biceps. Check out Everest and K2 flexing on you because today on 439, we're getting yoked from our head to our feet. Ooh, because Papa Swolio is going balls deep. We're going right in there. Bam. 3D fisting. The sun is shining. The birds are chirping. The bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. With all the knowledge nukes, welcome to the Gain Train. Welcome to Pump Town. Welcome to Gainesville. Welcome to Boston, Mass. Yes, precious. Sick Gains. What up? It's Papa Swoyo, a.k.a. Plank Sinatra. Look at that guy. Look at all blue eyes. Look at Plank Sinatra. Look at that. You like this one? You like this one? We got Harry Squatter today. Today we got Plank Sinatra. I am on fire. I am on fire. I'm I'm on. I'm on. I'm on point. I'm on point. Oh, what's going on, Dean? Mike, hello. What's up? Papa Swoyo is here. You're about to go 12 rounds with... Ah! Papa Swolio, 439, you have no ass. We're talking more about butts. We're talking more about you having no booty. No booty. Ah, the king of the north. More about the king of the north. Yes. Pa. Oh, there we go. Ah, shout out to Parma. Yeah, everyone. Listening to the swole while crushing at the gym. Is there a better way? Let's talk about that ass. Let's talk about that ass. All about the game. Come on the game train. Let's go. Cha cha. Toot toot, baby. Toot toot. Game train is on. Welcome everyone to 439. Thanks for watching live every day at 12 noon Eastern time. Thanks for watching on YouTube and listening to the podcast on SoundCloud and iTunes. Thank you for joining. Again, if you have not left a Facebook review here, please, after the show, if you could leave a review here on Facebook, I appreciate it. And also on iTunes, if you haven't done that yet. So please leave an honest review. I always like your feedback. And some great news. Let's keep on talking about the boot. booty. Let's, talk about, let's, let's keep on talking about the booty. I mean, Plank Sinatra is all about the core. He's all about the core. And the booty is you know, the base of that core, and we'll talk about that in a second. Tonight, tonight at Ocho at 8 p.m. Eastern Time in my premium community, we have the You Don't Know Squat Workshop, and uh, you heard me talk about it yesterday. You see me post it on Instagram, and you might have seen a video floating around here on the Facebook about the workshop. So if you have not signed up yet, if you've not registered for the workshop tonight, You Don't Know Squat, it's this it's this kind of fucking awesomeness for about an hour. And it's amazing information. Really going to go into a lot of depth. Going to follow up yesterday's Daily Swole with today's Daily Swole. But it's tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And don't forget, these workshops are weekly. Every week. And if you just signed up, uh, welcome. Yeah, welcome, Greg. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, those of you that just signed up for the workshop, you have access to all the prior week's workshops. So you got some homework to do. You got tons and tons of content to get your feet wet, and it's every week. So this is all the time. All the time, we're making gains here, and we're making sick gains with the workshops and uh, webinars in premium. So you get a lot more of that. So next week, we're going to have some more fucking knowledge nukes dropping uh, with a workshop. But for today, it's you don't know squat. Let's get into it. Yesterday, we talked about the glutes being the king in the north and why they're so important and how the glutes can prevent injury and how the glutes can prevent uh, back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, knee pain, foot pain. The glutes are the king. And we talked about how muscles create balance around joints. And when the glutes, because of constant habits and habitual training and improper training, they get shut down. Remember I talked about how the brain 
loses connection with the glutes. The brain loses connection with the muscle. The brain forgets the glutes phone number. So that being the case, we have to activate the glutes. So how do we activate the glutes? That's where we finished off with the scale, with the seesaw, that the glutes and the hip flexors, let me just put that up there again, just to kind of refresh your memory. And if you didn't join yesterday, showed this little seesaw action and then showed how the glutes and then the hip flexors, we have an imbalance here. Okay, so there's an imbalance that we want it to be balanced. And the hip flexors are on the front of the thigh and the glutes are obviously in the back, they're in the trunk. Now it's not about how big the glutes are, it's are the glutes, are the muscles working synergistically? Are the glutes working synergistically? Are they working properly to create a balance with the front of the joint? Every muscle in the body is a different size, and I want you to pay attention right now. If you haven't liked and shared, if you haven't hit the share button yet, now's the time to do it. If your glutes or any muscle is not equally strong, is not equally integrating, is not working synergistically, is not working in harmony with the other muscle, it doesn't matter what the size is, it matters what the action is, what the innervation is, what the strength ratio is, what the activity, what the length ratio is. Because every muscle is gonna look different. You're gonna have muscles that look like this. You're gonna have muscles that look like this. You're gonna have muscles. I'm gonna stop there because I'm probably gonna have draw drawing something that looks like a penis at some point. So I'm actually pretty glad that I made it out with drawing two muscles without drawing a dick. Uh, and those of you that watch a daily swell, you know these things happen. So let's, you know, when, you have, when it's a win, it's a win. So let's move on. So you have different shapes of muscles and you have different sizes. You're gonna have bigger muscles and you're gonna have smaller muscles and some muscles are bigger than others. Well, thank you. The important thing is that they're working properly. Okay, so you're gonna have some muscles that are small, some muscles that are longer and those might be on opposite sides of the joints. So it's not so much about that you need to have the same size muscle and the same strength on both sides. It's that you need to have them working the way they're supposed to relative to one another. So the muscle in the front, the hip flexors, it might be skinnier, they might be smaller, they might be thinner, and the glutes are like this big squat, like, you know, fat muscle groups on the back and on the side of the hip. So they don't look the same, but they need to be the same balance of strength and activity. So, and this is all based on for simple purposes, this is all based on a standard. This is all based on a balance, based on a zero point. So your body has an ideal posture. Your body has certain limb lengths, like your femur might be longer or wider or something than mine. Your hips might be slightly narrower or wider than mine. You're gonna have a proper position. It's called static posture, dynamic posture. You're going to have the ideal joint balance during movement. You're gonna have the ideal joint balance during a standing position, you know, when you're not moving. And we have to try to maintain that. And because you might be sitting down often, your body forgets that and adapts to something else, adapts to what you're doing, adapts to that sedentary position. And then you have problems because now the glutes aren't working properly, the hip flexors are pulling improperly, and then you might have chronic tension that causes back pain, chronic back pain, or repeated back pain, or throwing out your back frequently, or pulling your hamstring frequently. Any of you, float some hearts. I don't, it's not a good thing, but float some thumbs and float some hearts if you've had a, re, a repetitive injury. Who here has had an injury that has happened more than once? Drop it in the comments, actually, too. I mean, because I mean, I want you to float some hearts and thumbs anyway, because this is great fucking information. But drop it in the comments if you've had an injury that repeated itself, whether it was a pain that repeated itself, like you hurt your elbow, like tendonitis, and it went away and it came back, or back pain. If you've had back pain that came back, that I'm not saying you tore a muscle twice specifically, but have you had pain in the same area or an injury in the same area that has returned, that came back? And I'm one of them. I'm one, I've had knee pain that has gone and come back. I've had you know tight muscles in my back that have gone and come back. I've had shoulder pain that's gone and come back. It happens. When you're using your body, things happen. When you drive your car, you're going to have to change the tires. When you 
drive your car, you're gonna have to change the oil. You're going to have something that, oh shoot, I need this you know, gasket or this ball bearing fixed or this joint fixed, you know, things happen. You're using your body. So don't think that an injury is like, oh my God, I'm so fucked up, I, should, I did something wrong. Injuries can happen. I, like, you can just hurt yourself. You have professional athletes that are supposedly at the peak of their conditioning and they get hurt. Um, you know, it could be something that you step off a curb and you twist your ankle and oh, you hurt your ankle. Doesn't matter if you work on the gym all the time. Shit's still gonna happen, you're still gonna get hurt. There's a possibility. However, of course, with training and mobility, yoga, stabilization, you know, putting your body in a better position to reduce the risk of that injury. You know, but you'll always have a risk. If you're moving and you're existing in life, things are gonna happen and things are gonna wear down. So, you know, we don't stick around forever and we don't stay healthy forever and the body becomes less efficient at repairing, but we can, you know, increase our ability to be healthier longer and that's the important thing. So let's talk about how we activate. So I already told you the glutes are sleepy, right? So here are the glutes, here's that peach, right? And then the glutes are, the glutes are sleepy, okay? We have to wake them up. So how do we wake up the glutes? How do we activate? And let me rephrase, activate, and we're gonna call that turning on. And I'm not talking about, you know, sexual healing. I'm talking about activating those muscles, creating that neural pathway that connects the brain to the glutes. We have to remind, we have to re-trigger the brain to turn the glutes on. We have to retrain. Does this word training sound familiar? Are we training or are we working out? Oh, training. You mean like a program? Oh, you mean going to the gym or doing exercise in a formulated pattern for a specific intended result? Whoa, holy shit, is that what you're supposed to do? Yeah, that's kind of how this works, okay? So if you're going to the gym fucking around, not doing anything in particular, you're in many cases wasting your time. If you're not doing this especially, you're putting yourself at risk. You, why put yourself at risk? You're going to the gym to be healthier, right? You're working out, you're trying to get fit to be healthier in your life. And what's happening in many cases is you're going there and literally putting yourself in constant risk when you think you're giving yourself a better you know, jump on life and a better position to be healthier, you're actually going to the gym, doing things with improper form, risking yourself, you're putting your body in like concentrated risk rather than training efficiently to prevent risk. And that's, that's bad. So how do we turn these muscles on? Well, we need to do isolation exercises. Magic eraser, magic eraser. Isolation exercises, so we need to isolate. Now, what does it mean to isolate exercise? You know, what does it mean to isolate the glutes? It means we want to target, okay? So isolation exercises, meaning we're targeting one muscle. Now, ideally, okay, in parentheses, think ideally. You know, when we're trying to isolate the glutes and we do isolation exercises, you're never just hitting the glutes. You're never just hitting the glutes. Like it's impossible to do one exercise that only hits the glute muscles. But what you're gonna do is put your body in a position where you are just firing to the brain like the glutes are doing this, the glutes are doing this, the glutes are doing this, and the hamstrings won't take over. And that is a key problem. Now, I'm gonna finish with that. I'm going to finish with the hamstrings. I'm going to finish with a little bit of that concept of what happens and why it causes injury risk before we finish up here on the daily. So I'm going to talk about isolation and then I want to finish up with that and then we're going to go into it tonight um, in the workshop and we're going to go fucking balls deep on that. So targeting one muscle. Now this creates a neuromuscular neuromuscular pathway that already exists, but we are increasing, we're improving that activation and that innervation from the brain to the glutes. We're telling the brain, this muscle needs to work. You need to learn, you're teaching the brain, you're training your body. And it might not seem, it might seem weird, 
that your brain loses communication with the glutes, but that's what happens because you put your body in a situation day after day after day after day where it doesn't have to work the glutes, where it doesn't have to use proper intramuscular coordination, where it doesn't have to uh, create balance around the hips because you're sitting down, you're sitting in a car, you're watching TV, you're sitting on your ass. That pressure inhibits the muscle tissue in the backside. It shuts down the neural pathway from the brain to the glutes. The hip flexors are very short, they get very tight. The hamstrings get very short and very tight and other muscles start taking over for the job that the glutes would normally do. And because of that, we have to train the brain to remember brain, you have to hit the glutes. Brain, turn the glutes on. Brain, turn the glutes on. Brain, turn the glutes on. Hey. Brain, turn the glutes on. What? Brain, turn the glutes on. You have to keep on telling it and telling it. It's kind of like brainwashing. You're just literally telling over and over, do this for the glutes, do this for the glutes, do this for the glutes. And eventually, it will start doing it more efficiently. And then we can go into the next part. And then after the isolation takes place, then we can start doing other things because it's not over yet. You don't just do that and then go back to squatting. You don't just do that and then, oh, go back to your normal routine. You're not done yet. You haven't taught your body enough. That's just, this is the first part. It's more complicated than it seems, but it's very basic. It's very basic. Look at that, look at that. Did someone get butt hurt? Is that why you're giving me a so angry face? Butt hurt, get it? Butt, glutes, okay. Oh, angry face. Oh, I leave angry faces, angry faces. Fuck you, leave a couple hearts. Don't be a douchebag. Isolate. <laughs> isolation. This is how we're going to do isolation. Neuromuscular pathway, how are we going to target that muscle? You're going to do a lot of single joint exercise. Things like the hip bridge. Even things like what Plank Sinatra is doing. Okay? Even a plank. Activating the core. Doing isolation exercises with a longer duration, slower pathway, slower repetition scheme is going to be what you need to do for the glutes. So things like a single leg squat, and you might not be aware of what a single leg squat is, but that's a great one. Things like hip bridges, okay? Hip bridge, you might see the tube walk, and you might see those elastic bands. Most people on Instagram don't watch half the fucking shit you see. They put the bands in the wrong place. You need to put them in the right place. So lateral tube walking. A lot of people, a lot of people put these freaking bands above the knee. You don't want them above the knee in many cases because it teaches the body improper movement. It teaches the hips improperly. Um, so you see a lot of people doing like that side walking, you know? with the bands above the knees, that's not exactly where you want them to be uh, in many cases. So lateral tube walking. There are things like um, toe touches, single leg toe touches, and those sorts of exercises. So these are a couple that are very good in order to activate, in order to activate. So if you're liking these exercises, if you like, if you enjoy working that booty, float some hearts, and who, whatever fucktard is floating those angry sad faces you know that it does affect this broadcast it does negatively affect this broadcast so you might want to stop doing that because uh, you will be blocked single leg squat hip bridge and lateral tube walking are some very good ones also there are things like the single um single leg multi-planar reach in moving front to back moving side to side and moving transversely so you have a couple planes of motion front, back, side to side, and then everything in between, kind of like a compass. So not only do you have specific exercises, not only do you have specific exercises that you can target the glutes, you have specific directions that you need to target your glutes with, okay? Because your glutes need to work in different directions, not just back to front, but also side to side, also rotationally. There's many different things that your glutes have to do. So first off, you need to target you need to trigger those specific muscles. Then you need proper tempo. You need to go through your exercises slower and more drawn out. Why? Because it creates a better neuromuscular connection. It creates a better neuromuscular connection with 
higher repetitions and a slower tempo. And what that means is slower reps. Slower reps, longer in the eccentric, and longer holds during some isometric pauses. I'm not gonna get too much into the detail. I don't have time right now on the daily, but it's the pace, it's the isolation, and it's the tempo and the rep scheme that will turn on and create that pathway from the brain to the glutes. That being said, what happens after we isolate? Because he talked about that before. I said I was gonna finish. We talked about it before. What do you do after you isolate? What do you do after you isolate? Isolation, and then we are going to integrate the movement. And this is another word for tie it together. And the reason why you have to tie it together is because once you teach your body that the glutes have to turn on, you then have to teach it to work together with the other muscles, okay? Once the glutes turn on, you have to teach it to work properly with the other muscles. Just doing isolation exercise alone, just doing some lateral, just doing some lateral tube walking, just doing some fucking bullshit single leg squats, and then going back to lunges and going back to two leg squats right away, after you do this, you're gonna have the same problems. Your body's gonna fall right back into its old habits. Your body's gonna fall right back into the old problems right away, like right away. So just teaching your body, okay, glutes turn on, it's gonna forget. You need to do certain integration exercises to cement that new information that you're teaching your brain. You gotta fire the muscles, and then you have to tie it all in together. So first off, yesterday, talked about activating, but also inhibiting, doing lengthening movements, focusing on yoga, focusing on mobility in order to create a better balance, a better framework. And you're doing that constantly as you're doing isolation exercises during the, you know, the coming days and weeks. And then you're also working on integration exercises. When you're doing all that together, then you start getting proper movement patterns. You start getting your body and your hips that start moving properly, you reduce your risk of pain. Here's the bad part about not having activated glutes. If your glutes are not working, if your glutes are not working, if you do not have your glutes working properly, you have other muscles doing work. Remember what I said at the beginning? You can't just work one muscle. You can't just work one fucking muscle. You're always gonna work multiple muscles. You can't work just one muscle. If your glutes are not firing, if you're sedentary, if you're not training and isolating them, they're gonna be shut down. As a result, your lower back is gonna be working too much. Your lower back is gonna be out of position because your hips are not stabilized as the base of the core. Your hips are gonna be faltering, so like the bottom of a pyramid. Like in the pyramids in Egypt, it's like taking out a thousand of the base stones. It's gonna be less stable and it could fall over. So if your glutes are not activated, you're gonna have your lower back working too hard. You're gonna have your hamstrings working too hard. You might have some deep external rotators of the hip like the piriformis that are working too hard, getting too tight. Um, you might have things like uh, sciatic nerve issues. You're gonna have less stability in the hip, so you're gonna have more unstable femurs, the thigh bone, so you might have more risk for ACL tears, uh, tendonitis in the knee. You're gonna have less stability, so as your knees start caving in, your feet are gonna flatten more and tend to flatten inward, and you're gonna have more issues with the tissue on the bottom of the foot, causing plantar fasciitis. Uh, if you have chronic back pain, that's a big reason. If your hips are not stable, the lats attach from the hips and they go onto the shoulder. So if you have chronic shoulder pain, it could be related to unstable hips. And you could also have chronic neck pain because if your hips are not stable, chances are they're not completely balanced and you could have a tilt in your hips laterally and then it can cause chronic neck pain down the road. So if that doesn't scare the fuck out of you, you need to sign up if it, I mean, if it does, if it doesn't, if it doesn't scare the fuck out of you, good luck with pain in your life. But if that sounds like something that you need to learn a lot more about, then you need to be there tonight for the workshop. The link is in this description. You can click, you can sign up. If you can't find the link for whatever reason, you can message me right here on my Facebook page. But this is super fucking important. 
I've talked about this in other daily shows, you've probably heard me talk about it in the past, but with the workshop, now is the time to take this seriously. Now is the time to take this seriously. You have to invest in your body. You have to invest in your body. If you're looking for a short-term result, this is not the place for you. There's no such thing as an eight-week shred. There's no such thing as a 90-day or a 30-day or a six-week transformation. You're not a fucking butterfly. You have to invest. This is long-term stock market. This is 20, 30, 40-year mutual funds. Because if you are not planning for the future, if you do not train for the long-term, you are going to be so fucked. And I can't give you that perspective. I can't give you the perspective of having chronic back pain when you're 50. I can't give you the perspective of having knee surgery and knee replacement or hip replacement when you're 65. I can't give you that perspective. I don't even have that personal perspective. But I have trained so many elderly people. I have had a little bit of chronic pain here and there from tendonitis. I know what it's like. I know what it's like, I've seen it, and if you don't start taking this shit seriously, you are going to be extremely disappointed. You're going to be extremely, extremely regretful and remorseful in 10, 15, 20 years, maybe less, when you realize, oh shit, I should have listened, I should have started doing some more uh, corrective exercise, I should have done, started doing some more glue work, I should have listened to all Papa Swolio, because right now is when you can start. And no joke, and leave some comments below. Anyone that has done my 90 day dash program, and I'm gonna be talking more about that in the coming days because that's what this is all about. This builds so much in my 90 day program. Those of you that have done the 90 day dash, drop some comments below. When you start hitting your glutes, pain just starts to evaporate. Your body starts to balance itself out. It's designed to have these muscles activated is designed to have these muscles firing properly. This is the kicker. This is the difference between exercise and working out and training. This is the difference between working out and training, doing specific intentful exercise for a specific result. That is what training is. Not just going to the gym and fucking sweating and well, I feel banged up. Good for you. I hope you enjoy losing five pounds of water weight. This is serious exercise. This is serious exercise for a serious purpose. And if you're not taking your body seriously, you're gonna be very, very disappointed and you're gonna be absolutely, 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 you're going to be a fucking case study for this in 10, 20 years if you do not take this seriously right now. And hopefully it takes you that long because it could be right around the corner. And I'm not talking about a double hip replacement, I'm talking about tendonitis. I'm talking about back pain. You don't want chronic pain. I promise you, you don't want that. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 439 of The Daily Mother Swell, the most muscular podcast, swole cast, broadcast, and beard cast in the realm. Because when I flex, you flex. We all motherfucking flex our biceps. I'll see you every day at 12 noon Eastern time. I'll see you tomorrow, uh, same time, same place on Facebook. I'll see you also on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes for the podcast. And again, if you haven't uh, left me a Facebook review here right on my page, please leave an honest review. I appreciate it. Everyone, tonight, you don't know squat webinar in my premium community. The link is in the description, premium.swolnormous.com, premium.swolnormous.com. You could sign up for free and it is an amazing community. You'll get instant access to all the workshops that have done, been done up to this point, including tonight's. If you can't make it exactly at 8 p.m. Eastern time, you could join tonight at 9.30 p.m. and you can watch the replay, but please show up live because then you can participate with the open Q&A and get some real specific um, 
information based on you if you have chronic pain, if you have specific issues with squats and with form, we can get into that live on the workshop in premium. So the link is in the description here. Message me if you have any questions. I will see everyone tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. I'll see many more of you tonight for the You, do, you Don't <clears throat> No Squat Workshop. Keep making those sick gains. It's hump day, so it's perfectly appropriate for a Wednesday. Love you. Peace, McGee's. Deuce, McGoose. I'll see you all tomorrow on the next episode 440 of The Swole.